Shabbat Shalom, everybody. This is Rabbi Stephen, Rob Shmuel ben Yehoshua, yes, Rashbi. And um, hope you're having a great week. And uh, again, we're a little early. We, Tuesday night, we will be doing our Torah study on December, I guess it's 29th, huh? Getting close to New Year. So uh, just want to thank everybody that came out for the Bat Mitzvah. Sophie, she was great. Loved her Devar Torah. It was beautiful the way she told the essence of the Torah portion and talked about anti-Semitism today. And, and, you know, for me, what was really beautiful about that was the way she made Torah relevant. You know, a lot of these things happened over 3,000 years ago, yet the messages are timeless. And in fact, we're going to talk about that today. In the meantime, what I'd like to do, if you were at services this weekend, uh, you heard during our Mourner's Kaddish, we said a special Kaddish. We included Pastor Jack Forney, who was uh, an icon in the community. For the last six years, this righteous Gentile has been hosting the Holocaust March of Remembrance. He was instrumental in seeing a Holocaust memorial get put in Marietta. And uh, thank you, Pastor Jack. We certainly appreciate your efforts. And thank you also for putting a bridge between the Christian community and the Jewish community. You know, certainly, um, you know, and maybe I'm digging up a can of worms, but our history has not been so great over the last uh, 1800, 1600 years or so. And we all need to come together. It's more important now, you know, with the way the world is, the way uh, we have the 24-7 news cycle and you know, everybody can say anything on social media. So we all have to use that to come together rather than go apart. So thank you, Pastor Jack. And uh, let's use that as an example. Okay, so let's talk about relevance. This week, we finish up the book of Genesis with Parsha Bayechi. And this particular portion, or Sedra as it's known, or um, Parsha, is unique in all the Torah portions in that the portion starts really kind of in the middle of a, a paragraph. So what does that mean? If you look at the various sidrot or parshiot or portions, you will see that where one portion ends, before the next portion begins, there's typically a new paragraph. Uh, and in the San Sino Chumash, um, you will see a bunch of phase, maybe three of them. And what that means is petucha. Uh, um, it means open. So the section is open from one section to the other. Now, uh, some other sections, you'll see a samach, which, which means situma, which means closed. And closed means that instead of a different paragraph, you have a space of approximately nine letters. Now, again, the Sansino Chumash uses the fei and the samach to, to distinguish. Uh, the art scroll doesn't. It just uh, has, it just shows the portions. And again, one of the things, and we talked about this at the Bat Mitzvah, when you open the Chumashim, most Chumashim will do this. When you look at the pattern of words, it will reflect the pattern that you see in the Torah. So one way that we rabbis and we Baal Kriot, people that read the Torah use to find where our place is. So this is significant because what does it mean? Jacob is getting ready to die, so he calls in all his sons. He calls in Joseph first and Joseph's sons, all right? And the idea that it's closed means that his prophecy has kind of eluded him at this point. So he's not able to see the future. He's worried that maybe some of his uh, descendants will turn out to be like Ishmael or Esau. You know, even though these two repented and they had their good times, you know, they, they certainly had their share of non-righteous type of behavior. Let's just put it that way. So also, um, it also talks about how, um, you know, he, he was, again, blocked off from that prophecy. So he calls in. So jo Jacob is about ready to, to die. He sees the end coming. So he wants to bless his son. Now, let me take another segue here. Somebody asked why it's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and not Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. Joseph had a gift of prophecy, but not to the extent that Jacob did. Right? Jacob's going to bless his sons. He had that ability. 
So who does he call in first? Joseph. And he says, bring your sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. He was impressed, just like that blessing that we recite Friday after the wine for the children, how these two offspring of Joseph, who was very righteous himself, were righteous as well. They maintained Torah. Uh, the part of the Midrash says that, you know, he studied Torah with Ephraim, even though Ephraim was the younger. And Ephraim, and Jacob wanted to bless Ephraim first. And Menashe was kind of like his assistant, but they both maintained Torah. They maintained that ethical point of view, that ethical behavior, even in the face of the paganry of the Egyptians. And Jacob wanted them to be like his sons. So that poses an obvious, an obvious question. Well, there's supposed to be 12 tribes. Now we've got 14. How does that work in? And it's very simple. When you're including Levi, remember, the Levites became the ministers. They didn't have a share of land. Their share was Torah, and they were the teachers. They ministered to the priests in the temple, and then there were the 40-some-odd cities in which they inhabited, and that's how they uh, served uh, the rest of the tribes of, of, the Israel, of Israel, the Israelites. So when we're talking about just the tribes, we include Levi, Levi and then we include Joseph as one of the tribes. When we're talking about land, which the Levites did not have, then instead of having the tribe of Joseph, we have the half tribes of Ephraim and Manasseh. That way we keep that number at 12. Okay, so he adopts them as his sons. And then he starts blessing or giving blessings to the other sons. And, you know, he, he follows them in order uh, of birth for Leah. You know, Reuben should have been the firstborn, should have gotten the birthright, should have been the priest, should have been you know, the king, but because of his impetuous behavior, because of the incident with the bed where he took, where he, he was going to sleep with Bilhah, who was Jacob's uh, mistress, um, he, he basically blew it. So basically, Joseph got the kingship, Judah got uh, the leadership, and Levi's got the, um, the, the ministry the, uh, as the priests. So then he calls in Simeon and Levi. And he says, you know, curses be your anger. These two, you know, just kind of set each other off and they, get, they rile each other. And they're the ones that killed all the men in Shechem when they were recovering from the circumcision. Then he brings in Judah. You know, the scepter shall not depart from Judah. Talked about the kingship. Then he starts bringing in the other sons. Uh, he talks about Zebulun and Issachar, who were Leah's youngest sons, and how um, Zebulun was the seafaring. Issachar studied Torah, but they also had land and they supported each other. You know, Dan and Asher. Dan, of course, the most famous uh, descendant of Dan was Samson and how it's like a snake and bites at the, uh, their opponent's heel. And Asher that uh, supplies everybody with honey. And you know, Asher means happy, keeps everybody happy. Uh, I talked about Naphtali and God. God, of course, was uh, one of the tribes that settled with Reuben on the other side of the Jordan, but they could always be counted on for battle. Uh, Naphtali also were also very good warriors. And when Barak, Deborah's general, was attacking people, he used some of the um, Naphtalites, you know, to help him out. So Benjamin, and he, of course, blessed Joseph. Uh, he blessed Benjamin, a wolf, you know, that, that, that is, you know, kind of powerful. And who were the Benjamites? Well, the first king, Saul, was a Benjaminite. And Mordecai, you know, that came, that, that saved our people in Shushan in Babylonia. You know, he was a Benjaminite. So we had some noted dignitaries there. Now, here's a question. Something that I've kind of been struggling with, yes, wrestling with, just like Israel wrestles, so do we all. Why do we talk about the 10 lost tribes when they're lost? Now, these days, people say that the tribe of Manasseh is, is out there. They're coming back into Israel. They also say that the tribe of Don has been discovered. They, you know, they were a tribe in Africa and, you know, they maintain Shabbat, and they do some, some Jewish things, but they also are pagans. They also have idols. They do some of that. And, and I thought about it, and, and you know, the, the best answer I can come up with, you know, because we're talking about relevance. And the obvious answer that some people might say is, well, uh, Rav Shmuel, Rashbi, in the Messianic age, all the tribes are going to come back and, 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 you know, fill up the promised land and everything will be great. But what do we do until then? So to me, the best answer I could think of, it's almost like religious Darwinism, you know, survival of the fittest. The other tribes didn't have the integrity to stay the course. 
when after Solomon died, he ran up a big debt in building his temple. And the 10 tribes says, we don't want any part of this. You know, we're separating. And what did they do? And these were these were descendants of Ephraim. The first king there was, you know, I mean, they had Solomon, but some of the kings were descendants of Ephraim. But one of Solomon's kings said, you know, we're, we're going to ignore Torah. We're going to put up not just one golden calf, but two of them. And these are your gods, O Israel. The Zohar talks about that. So they left the foe. The tribe of Judah and part of the tribe of Benjamin and the tribe of Levi, they stayed the course. They stayed with Torah. They inhabited Jerusalem. And one of the uh, ideas when Jacob was, was blessing Benjamin is that they would be inside the, the temple territory. So maybe that's what the lesson is. You know, we've got all these qualities that we have to pay attention to. But remember, we really have to stick with the tribes that survive. And we have to really emulate that. Okay, that's it for this week. Hope you have a great new year. We will see you Tuesday night for our regular Torah study, where we'll be talking about this more. And Shabbat Shalom. And thank you again for tuning in. And once again, to the Levine family and and some Nachas and Mazel Tov to uh, Ellen and Bernard with your granddaughter. Wonderful Bat Mitzvah. And I was honored to be able to appreciate it.